Those fish live there year round. Dave, you haven't lost your touch a bit, buddy. This fishery in Guatemala is really not like any fishery I've seen before. Right long teaser. See the sail coming out? Right long teaser. Dave and I both catch sailfish, but two totally different techniques. He's coming on. He's coming towards this one. What does everybody always say about fishing? Hours of boredom followed by seconds of excitement. Go ahead, just Dave. jumped on my line. Come on, Dave. Keep it in. Let's get a triple. Here's one right here. Aquí tiene uno. We got one right here, guys. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Malt. I got you, what you saying? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300 pound tunas. Our passion is our profession and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. That's the one! He's not superstitious because that's bad luck. Woo! All right, get with him. Come with him. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. One of the biggest things for me when it comes to fishing anymore is really not the fish, it's more the adventure. I like to go to new places, I like to check out new things, I like to meet new people. And then there's kind of the exception to that rule, and I think that's sort of a comfort factor. There's also some places that I love to go to every year. I love to go back to Baja, I love to come to the Keys, I love to go to Louisiana, and Casa Vieja definitely falls in that latter category. So I've been to Casa Vieja a couple times now. The thing about Casa Vieja I really like, I really enjoy, is the opportunity for me to go somewhere and just turn it off. You know, fishing being what it is, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into a good fishing trip, just like a good day of fishing and catching fish. One thing is for certain, Casa Vieja is a sure thing. And when I say sure thing, what I mean is you can go to Costa Vieja any day of the year and you can expect to catch a bunch of fish, have a great time, be pampered, eat great food. I mean, it, it's as turnkey of a fishing package as there is. From the time I land at the airport, everything is taken care of from the fishing to the food to where I'm gonna sleep, I mean, it's just hands down, you get to turn it off and enjoy yourself and not think about a thing. I saw that one come up on the teaser, just a little splash. I actually thought it was the bait. That's a big one. What do you got, Rutchie? <laughs> little spindle beak. I'm glad to see Casa Vieja is just how we left it. You kind of had to like your chances of catching a sail. This fishery in Guatemala is really not like any fishery I've seen before. And from what we've seen, the fish kind of come in, they kind of go out. That's, That's a big, big sailfish. You know, sometimes they're as close as 15 miles, sometimes they're as far as 50, but they're always around somewhere. You've seen more stripe marlin, right? We've been seeing some stripies. Actually, one of the boats just caught one now. And once the fleet locates that meat, they call everybody else in, and they really just beat up that area using, you know, their proven tactics to make the most out of the opportunities. Thanks for going, Rush. Thanks, Thanks good buddy. It's a good hook job you did there, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Clear it. This one. Little guy. That looks like one of our sailfish. Around the time Odyssey was born, I started my business. I met Dave maybe a few years earlier. So I've known Dave this whole time. What's the most you've ever had hooked at once? Seven. Seven? So they've eaten everything in the spread, and then you pitch a couple. I've always been, you know, outboard, kind of light tackle, open fisherman boat. Dave, when I met Dave, he, he had an open fisherman. I mean, he was in that game, but he drifted more towards the sport fish boats. Good job. Hey, nice work, King. All right, nice going there, buddy. So back in 90, October of 98 was my first season in Guatemala. Dave, you haven't lost your touch a bit, buddy. And let's get it to the boat first. You have not lost your touch. 
And uh, I got down there by, by a guy, his name was uh, Tim Choate. He had the original fishing lodge down there, which was called the Fins and Feathers. Which boat was the boat that started it all? Like, what boat was your first boat? Or yeah. did you start with two here? When we started, we started with two here. You started so with two, the, which were they? The release actually was the one that, that the original owner started with, which was the 37 Merit we were gonna fish tomorrow. A Couple years into it, I brought down another boat, and then about another year into it, he needed more rooms, because we were, you know, his lodge wasn't big enough, so I rented a house. And then he closed his business down, and then kind of by default, I was at the right place at the right time, and kind of went from there. If you watched the first time we visited here, we got to meet and fish with the owner, David Salazar. Kim and Rush go back, they have some mutual friends. They've known each other for 20 something years. They've kind of both gone different directions. You know, Rush became the charter guy in Key West and raised his family here. Dave sort of split off and went to Guatemala for over 20 years he's been down there. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Evan Rood, Penn, Let the Battle Begin, Yeti Coolers, Built for the Wild, The Florida Keys and Key West, Come As You Are, Simrad, Go With Confidence, Go With Simrad, Nomad Design, Crafted by Experience, and BDOutdoors.com. Wind it up, wind it up to the teaser, dude. Right there, leave it right there, leave it right there. Who's coming on it? I got it. Yeah, he ate it. He dropped it, he dropped it. The other thing that makes this fishery so unique is it's all catch and release. They don't take any sailfish, and it really picks my interest. I'm wondering how often these fish are getting caught. Take that left, take that right rigger out, pop it out, and get ready for a bite. Just stay in that corner and get ready for a bite. Now work in that same area. Do you think that might be the same fish? Eh, I doubt it, but I think there's more than one around, is what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, there's more than one. They run in packs. They run in packs. I'm not sure what traps all those fish down in Dave's backyard. That's where they live. Guatemala has probably the best sail fishery I've ever seen in my life. We put out probably over 10,000 tags and we've maybe gotten three back. Is that possible? Three. Yeah. So you three, think there's a million sailfish in here? There's just a pile, a pile, a pile of fish. Crazy. It's a huge, over the years, we've got over, probably over 10,000 tags over the years. And like I said, we've gotten three, four back, five, maybe five. Yourselves over, or anywhere? Just our lodge. You know, they stay in that area. You can tell whatever it is, the bait, the currents, whatever that's making them happy. It's keeping them in that same relatively small area. And the, you know, the numbers of fish aren't declining. Nobody is taking them. I have more satisfaction watching you catch fish. I know you struggle sometimes. It just makes me happy. More times than not. <laughs> How you doing there, old Rush? Holy hell, we caught one finally. It took a professional to do this. Uh, you know, some days I just shine. Some days, not often though. So enjoy it. You know, Dave, is a fisherman. I mean, once you get it in your blood, it's in your blood, and, and that's what Dave does. You know? What do you got there, Captain Dave? A little sailfish. I thought they didn't grow little down here. Well, it's little for our standards. It's still bigger than yours. I like fishing with that braid. I love it. Since that first trip where we fished with Dave, we've all become very good friends with Dave and his wife, Kristen. A couple weeks ago, we had a four or five days of it, but it wasn't bad. It's still fishable. Big swells. Yeah, big swells. You know, if you find us at the boat show, we're always hanging around the Casa Vieja booth. If we're out of town somewhere and they're in the same town, we're getting together for dinner. I remember my first sailfish too. He's kicking. <laughs> I remember my first sailfish too. <laughs> Hook straightened out. What do you want me to do? I remember my first sailfish, it's okay. You gotta stop that CrossFit <laughs> stuff. I mean, uh, you see this grip? I'm telling you. You see the grip? Well, we all know about your grip. Dave's got the opportunity <laughs> now to step away and just, you know, it pretty much runs itself. But you always feel like you're kind of missing something. Oh, they caught 40 today. Oh, they caught 30 today. Oh, the blue marlin are biting. 
you, you always got to get a little taste of that. You always want, you always come back for more. And that's why Dave's still running his own operation. Dodo. Oh, good yeah. Dodo. Oh, don't miss, don't, don't. Nice don't, work, Rutchie. Don't mix that up, dude. That's Anywhere there's pelagic fish, like sailfish, there's always going to be some pelagic bycatch. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, it is, dude. It's like a real one. I've been wanting to catch a good Dodo. It's been a while. I never get to catch them anymore. Dave, you never disappoint. And that includes, you know, yellowfin tuna, mahi-mahi, blue marlin. You know, for some reason, they don't catch a lot of wahoo down there, but that's something that we would have expected. But what really gets me and Rush fired up is those big Dorados. Thing looks good. Looked like a good one. Yeah, when it first jumped, I'm like, get out of the way here, son. I'm sorry. Oh, buddy. God, this is scary. When's the oh, last time boy. you had one of those in your hand? Probably about five years. Ah, it's a little one, dude. Cow, isn't it? Yeah, a little cow. Where's the bull? Oh boy, Hollywood's on there's the a, sticks. There's a whole lot of cow. A whole lot of cow. It's a whole lot of cow, baby. The heifer. Damn, that is a good cow. That's a good cow. Well, you can't tell, it's been a while. All right, that is a good cow right there, dude. You know, I don't know about everybody, but one thing that gets me super pumped up is big mahi. I love seeing big mahi. Dang. What? I'm jealous. I want to catch one. Growing up as a kid down here, big mahi was the target. You know, summertime would come and we'd be thinking about it months in advance, getting ready, and we would go looking for them. You know, anything over 40 pounds was a stud. Nice fish, Rutchie. Right long. Right long teaser. teaser. Look at his dorsal out. I got him, I got him. Right, right long teaser. Go back, go back. Hold right there, hold right there. Dave and I both catch sailfish, but two totally different techniques. He's coming He's, he's coming towards this one. Watch your side, you look like you switched. Dave's trolling, raising these fish, dredges, teasers. I'm live baiting for him. Kites, goggle eyes, thread herring, pilchard. How did I end up with the rod again, by the way? Well, if you mean you, you, you're throwing elbows now, it's personal. Both techniques extremely effective. Another real cool angle of fishing at Casa Vieja is getting to ride on these boats. You know, most of these boats were built in Stewart, Florida. They're all very classic boats, and he's kind of got one of every one of them, and they're all in great shape. It's really like, you know, getting to go back in time a little bit and, and see what made these classic boats so awesome and see them in an environment doing what they're made to do, which is, you know, catch sailfish. Dave has a fleet of 10 boats, so to maintain 10 boats is to me is unthinkable. Anybody that owns one boat knows it can test you to your limits. I think, you know, if you've been running boats for long enough, you've been in an engine room throwing wrenches and cussing. Well, Dave's got it trying to do that with nine boats. They've all got great Cummins power in them. They've all got Simrad electronics, but I am sure every day is a challenge with something breaking or something not working right. He really had to go and develop his own solution which came in the form of his own boat yard. And you've been doing that with, with quite a few of the boats, right? You bring them in, you'll use them for a little while if you can, and then you'll, you'll yeah, yeah. pretty much give it a full facelift. Yeah. We're trying to do these facelifts now so they last us about 10 years. So this is a huge part of what makes the lodge work, having the yeah. boat yard. You couldn't really have the lodge without no, the boat no, no, yard. No, 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 This lodge wouldn't work without the boat yard. Dave sees each one of these boats like a farmer sees his tractor. You can't have your tractor down or you don't have crops and you don't have any money. And the nice thing about gutting them, you build them to your specs. You yeah. know what works down here. You know what the clients want. You build them to how you want yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. I'm building this thing to last hopefully another 20 years and we just repower them every six to eight years. Just what? take motors out and put them in. The biggest challenge we run into is getting parts. So, I mean, there's nothing really readily available. So we try to keep a stock of parts and stuff like that, like, you know, filters and belts and you got to be able to switch boats in and out. You know, I couldn't even imagine, I mean, what it takes to keep that, uh, that fleet running. Knowing you 20 years ago and seeing you now, I mean, you've accomplished a lot. I mean, you should be proud of yourself. Hey, I don't want to touch No, go ahead. You got it, buddy. 
couldn't help yourself, could you? It's awesome. Look at him tail awesome. walking right out of the boat. That guy's on fire. Clear the rods, That's a sailfish we know. That's sir, that's sir, the Hollywood fish. Wow, look at that guy go. It's awesome. Let's step back on this one. You want it in? One of the main things about Dave's fishery that I've noticed being down there a couple times is I feel those fish are residential fish. Had a little slow start this morning, but four for four now. Four for four? I missed two this morning, now I'm four. Count. Who's counting? I don't know, I guess I ain't. Well, you keep jumping up like you're a rabbit. Oh, dude, I can't help it, dude. You guys are slow. Those fish live there year round, and you can always target them, and that's why his fishery is so good. Look how lit up that one is. What does everybody always say about fishing? Hours of boredom followed by seconds of excitement. Damn it! Well, he pounded that. I'm on two, Rush. Come on, Double. Yours ahead, just Dave. jumped on my line. Come on, Dave, keep it in. Let's get a triple. I think yours just jumped. I might be off. I don't know whose fish is whose. Oh, no, we're... Mine's way back there. I think we're clustered. Isn't that yours no, close? you're not even near to me. That's yours. Oh, the line was bellied up, yeah. and I couldn't tell which way it was going. Let me introduce you to this fishing thing. Yeah, exactly. Kind of weird. I don't usually have this problem. When you're trolling and you're pulling these teasers around, you're basically raising fish. And a lot of times, you're just seeing this little stick come out of the water. Did you get bit, too? I think there was a third, well, no, I think there was a third fish that came up on the right teaser with small. Here's one right here. I get any uno. We got one right here, guys. Whoa. Put the rod tip in his hand. All right. Keep whining, keep whining, bud. Keep whining, just keep whining. Keep whining. Keep whining. Keep whining. There you go. That was perfect. Oh, yeah. And we got a triple, girls. Local knowledge is brought to you by Andro's Boatworks. Adventure never ends. Mustad Hooks. Defining fishing hooks since 1877. Aftco, the American fishing tackle company. Costa, see what's out there. Seakeeper, once you feel it, you'll never boat without it. Sea Deck, your boat deserves Sea Deck. Fleer, the world's sixth sense. And by Casa Vieja Lodge. Experience five star angling in tropical Guatemala. They say the devil's in the details, and it's really true. Dave and Kristen have fine tuned this lodge. And I mean fine tune from the food, to the service, to the drinks, to the Casa Vieja chapstick. I mean, they've got it all covered. It's all done right. It's all done professionally. And I think that's what keeps their clientele coming back. A lot of people lately have been coming back. It's more because of the experience, the whole lodge experience actually. And the bill fisherman is like, I guess like anything else, like a tarpon fisherman, a trout fisherman. It's a guy that specifically loves to billfish and what else to do it, but the best place on the planet. Big mouth. Big mouth. Mouth, mouth. Big mouth. Mouth, mouth. See the That's a good one. That's a 40 pounder. You would think there was a follower, all these singles. Is that normal, Dave? What? Are there so many singles? Single Dorados? Yeah. This week, last week, they were coming in in herds of five and 10. I swear. I catch a million of these and they still get me jacked up, the big ones. Oh, the big the big ones are fun, dude. They're so awesome. That big blunt head. With that one in PV. The colors. I mean, what Dave's built is amazing. I could catch dolphin all, all day, day, every day. <laughs> well, that's like, you know, back home. You know South Florida. That's a good one. Look at those fins. 
Is that gonna be dinner at the lodge? You know, we get to fish in a lot of different places with a lot of different people, but Casa Vieja, it really does feel like our second home. Oh, God. Oh, wow. Oh, he barely got him. Ow, that's my dog. Sorry, buddy. That is a good one, man. Never gets old catching those things, huh, Rush? No, man. Look how pretty they are. We really enjoy the people. We really enjoy the fishing. We really enjoy the service. And that really makes for a great laid back fishing getaway. God, so pretty. Look at that. Look at that rod. That's what we call them up in the Keys. Wow. wow. Goofing her off. You know, after making my second trip down to Casa Vieja in three years and seeing Dave and seeing Dave's operation, it's time for me to get him back over here and show him my neck of the woods. Knowing you 20 years ago and seeing you now, I mean, you've accomplished a lot. I'm, you should be proud of yourself.